Hi everyone, welcome to this video where I'll explain you how to install Windows on a 2019-2020 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro without using Bootcamp Assistant. Although Bootcamp Assistant usually works fine, there might be several reasons you want to use this method. For example, if you want to completely get rid of macOS or you want to install Windows on an external drive. Also, if you experience issues with Bootcamp Assistant, this method might help you to still get Windows on your MacBook. Unfortunately, there are also some challenges by using this method and the biggest one being that Windows and the Windows installer doesn't have drivers for the integrated keyboard and trackpad. So to get through the installation, you will need an external keyboard and mouse uh, in order to control the installer. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that you can find all information I will share in the video and much more on my blog, jensd.be, for which you can find a link in the description. So if you plan to go through this process yourself, I really recommend you to have a look there. Let's have a look now at the high level steps which you need to go through in order to end up with a fully working uh, Windows installation on your MacBook. So first we'll get the model identifier for your specific device. We'll need that later to download the correct drivers. Then we'll reboot in recovery mode to be able to disable part of the T2 security features in order to be allowed to run Windows. Next, we'll repartition the disk with disk utility to reserve some space. After that, we'll prepare a USB drive containing the Windows installer and the required drivers. We'll use that to boot the Windows installer and run through the installation. After that, we'll install the driver for Wi-Fi so we can get connected to the internet and install the rest of the drivers using Windows Update. At the end of the video, I will also show you how you can easily switch between macOS and Windows if you're having a dual boot installation. Let's get started by having a look at the requirements to go through the process. So to get through the installation, you will need an external keyboard and a way to connect it to your, to your MacBook. You will also need a USB drive that can be connected to USB-C. Important here to know is that it cannot be connected to a dongle that has multiple ports, otherwise the bootloader will not be able to recognize it and you will not be able to start the installer from it. The first thing we need to do is to get the model identifier of our device. So the easiest way to do that is to click the Apple icon in the corner, go to About This Mac and click System Report. As you can see here, the second line contains my model identifier, which is MacBook Air 8.2. Right now we need to reboot the MacBook into recovery mode. This is both to disable the security features of the T2 chip that would prevent us from booting the Windows installation media and also to repartition the disk to make sure we have some space to install Windows. So to reboot in recovery mode we can simply restart and while we restart we need to hold Command and R. The best is to hold Command R up until the point you see the progress bar. And from that moment you can let go. As you can see we are now in recovery mode. And from here we can control the startup security features of the T2 chip using utilities startup security utility. And we need to authenticate with an administrator password. As you can see by default, the secure boot is set to full security. We will turn off this security feature and we will allow booting from external or removable media. This allows you to boot from the USB drive which you will create. Simply by closing the window, you already applied the changes. So now we can go to the next step and that is to partition the disk. So we go to disk utility and we change the view to view all devices. The default installation has a APFS container with some volumes under there for Mac. The container is using the, the whole disk. So what we need to do here is create an additional partition for Windows. And we can do that by selecting the SSD, then click partition. If you would like to only install Windows and completely get rid of macOS, you can just do Erase here and then choose, choose for MS-DOS FAT. When you click Apply, this will remove the APFS container and will create a single volume there 
for use with Windows, which allows you to use all of the disk space with Windows. For this video, I will do a dual boot install. So what I will do, I will select the SSD and instead of erase, I choose partition. We get the suggestion that if you want to create an additional volume for use with macOS, you better create an additional APFS volume, but that's not what we want. So we continue with partitioning. And as you can see here, like we said, the whole disk is taken by that APFS volume and we can simply add another volume there. I'll we'll give it a, a certain size, so I'll take 160 gigabyte here and change the type to MS-DOS FAT. I'll give it a label. And once we click apply and confirm, Disk Utility will resize the APFS container to the remaining space and then it will create a new volume or partition there which we can use for our Windows installation. It looks like in macOS 11 or Big Sur there are still some bugs in Disk Utility. At least I haven't seen this with previous versions of Disk Utility, but I always got this message that the partitioning failed. And when you click done, you can see that instead of creating my partition here, which I want to use with Windows, it created an additional APFS uh, container. It's quite easy to resolve. You can just simply click partition again and change the partition type instead of APFS to MS-DOS and click apply, partition and you will see that we'll experience a second bug actually and that is that the disk label doesn't get applied completely as you see we only get the first letter W in this case can simply rename it but it doesn't feel very right as this is something very critical you could easily lose data when something is wrong with this kit. After reserving space for the Windows installation it's time to prepare the USB drive which we'll use to install Windows. We'll do that using the Windows Media Creation Tool which you can download directly from Microsoft. Once downloaded open the tool Accept the license terms. Choose to create installation media directly and select the preferred language. Click next and select the USB drive which you want to use. At this point, the tool will download the ISO matching your selections and extract it to the USB drive. This can take quite some time. In my case, it took a little more than 15 minutes. Now that we have the USB drive prepared with the Windows installer, we need to get a driver specific for the model of MacBook you have. This is the reason we got the model identifier using About This Mac in the first step. We'll be using a tool called Brigadier, which was created to do exactly this. We can download Brigadier from the author's GitHub page, but Brigadier is using 7-zip internally, so we first need to install this, otherwise I've noticed you run into issues. Once 7-zip is installed, we can launch Brigadier from a command prompt. We need to pass the MacBook model identifier, MacBook Air 8.2 in my case, on the command line as an argument. Brigadier will then download all drivers and bootcamp tools to the directory from where you launched it. Final step to prepare our USB drive is to copy that folder called bootcamp and something to the same drive which we used with the Windows Media Creation tool. At this point we are ready with our preparation, so let's boot the Windows installer from the USB drive. As I mentioned before, it cannot be connected to a dongle which has multiple ports, but it has to be directly connected to a single USB port. Otherwise the bootloader will not be able to detect it. So now to restart our Mac uh, with the bootloader, we restart and hold down the Option key.
As you can see the bootloader detected our macOS which is there and our USB drive and just to be sure we can disconnect it, we can see it disappear and if we reconnect it again you will see it appear. So we are sure that this is our USB drive, you can select it and start. Right now as you can see the Windows installer is starting but you will notice as soon as we are in the installer the keyboard and trackpad are not working. Right now the Windows installer is started but as you can see the keyboard or trackpads are not working at all. So it's time to connect my keyboard which is connected to a dongle. Unfortunately this doesn't fit in at the same time but I found out that if you remove the USB drive plug in As you can see, as soon as I connected the external keyboard and mouse, I'm able to control the installation. And we can continue. Right now we run into the next issue and that is that uh, the Windows installer cannot detect our SSD. That's because the installer doesn't have a driver for it, but fortunately we, prepare, we are prepared for that and we download the drivers and copy them to our USB drive. So we can just browse to our USB drive, the bootcamp folder, WinPE, driver, Apple SSD 64, click next. And as you can see right now, the Windows installer is able to detect our FE partition, the APFS container and also the partition which we reserved. We will use that one to install Windows. First we need to format it as NTFS and then we can continue with the installation. And here things continue just as any regular Windows installation. After several reboots and quite some patience, you end up with the next stage of the installation and here you need to click yourself through uh, some questions. Unfortunately, you need some more patience because several more reboots will be involved. Right now the installation finished but unfortunately a lot of drivers are still missing and the important ones like the keyboard and trackpad are still not working and this can be fixed by going through the bootcamp installer again using the external keyboard and, and mouse. So we can navigate to the USB drive, bootcamp, run the setup. After the reboot we can immediately notice that still quite some drivers are missing but the more important as you can see here but the most important is that our um, wireless network driver has been installed. This means that at this point we can connect to the internet and we can run Windows Update to install the rest of the drivers which we are missing. Let Windows Update do its thing until all available updates are installed. This can, again, take quite some time. When required, perform the requested reboot. After the reboot, you will see that some devices are still missing drivers. These didn't come with the recommended updates. To fix this, we need to relaunch Windows Update and allow it to install the optional updates. And after another reboot, you can see all drivers got installed and everything should be operational. Now that all the drivers are installed, we have a fully working 
MacBook on under Windows. As you can see, the trackpad is working, the keyboard is working, Wi-Fi is connected, sound is working, and even keyboard shortcuts like to change the brightness or the volume are just working as expected. Now if you want to boot back to macOS, the easiest way is from Windows to go to the Installed Bootcamp tool and choose Restart in macOS. And as you can see the system will boot up in macOS. If from macOS we want to boot to Windows, it works in a similar way by choosing the startup disk. As you can see, macOS detected both the volume for macOS and the volume for bootcamp. After allowing to make changes, we can simply select our Windows volume and click restart. After confirmation, you will see that the system reboots straight into Windows. In case you run into problems or you just find it a more convenient method, you can also choose to hold down the option key when the system boots. This is exactly the same as we did to launch the installer from USB. As you see the bootloader now presents us with two options. The left one is Mac and the right one is Windows. So we can simply switch between them and choose which one we desire. After going through these steps and once all drivers are installed, you end up with a fully functional MacBook with Windows 10. Everything is basically working, also the uh, shortcut keys for brightness and volume, except for the fingerprint scanner or the Touch ID, because this is closely integrated with the T2 chip and there is no support for Windows yet. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've liked this video, please put a thumbs up. And if you like this or similar content, consider subscribing to my channel. As mentioned, I also have a blog, yanzi.be, where you can find everything I discussed here in detail and much more. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you back here soon.